All right, you made it to the final video where we will put the finishing touches on our character and put the digital cherry on top of them. So we will explore the blob brush and you'll get to see how I add shades and highlights to our characters. We'll also use the width tool to add flare to some of these plain vector lines we have here. And lastly, we will turn the lights on on our character and bring them to life. So let's get started. So with some more hair and part of the bow tie drawn, let's go ahead and add some separation to the feet. Okay, to do that, we're gonna go back to our pencil tool. And what I want, I just want a stroke, I don't want a fill. So let's go over here and bring the fill to the foreground. And then right below here, let's use the none selection, the, the one with the white box and the red line going through it. I want a transparent fill. Okay, so, now let's go down here to the feet. I'm gonna hit Command plus to enlarge it slightly and then space bar to drag up to my toes here. And I'm gonna click here at the bottom and drag up. Okay, and careful not to hit any other keys while you're doing that, excuse that. And then let's make another one here. Okay, those look pretty good. Let's make a couple of tweaks. Let's go to Select Tool and let's go ahead and Click and hold shift to click both of our new strokes here. And then if you don't have the stroke, I'm going to go ahead and close this so we can find it if you don't have it open. Go to Windows and select Stroke. And it's the same thing that we had previously, but we have more details here in this panel. So if you're not seeing this, and your options are hidden, go to this little flyout window on the right and click show options because we want to access this stuff down here. We need some options here. So what I want to do is I want to adjust the cap. Right now I have a straight line at the end which shows here and we have three options. We want to go to the round cap right here in the middle. So we're going to switch from a flat cap to a rounded cap. And in doing so, if I de-click, you can see my corners are rounded. I'm going to click Command Plus, get a better look, and you see I have rounded corners now. However, it expanded the width of our stroke, so we're going to go ahead and just click this up or drag it however you want, and that looks good. I'm just going to quickly get my direct selection tool so I can get my control panels. Whoops, grab the wrong thing. Click Command Z, no big deal, undo. There we go, and I'm gonna just give this a little bit more curve. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna shift, drag to the other foot, hit N to go back to the pencil tool, and then we're gonna make some more separating lines here, and another one there. So this time, when you draw with the pencil tool, sometimes if you draw a little quick like I did, you'll get this little, you'll get a couple extra anchor points that maybe you didn't intend. Just go to your direct selection tool by either clicking it or pressing A, then select that point you you want to remove. And when you see it darkened and the other one's light, just hit delete. And we just quickly got rid of that. This one's hanging over, so I'm going to select it and then hit the arrows to just move it around. That looks good. And to quickly zoom out to see everything on our page, hit Command-0. And we can go back to our original starting point. Looks good. Now let's add some eyebrows. So go back to your pencil tool and up here at the top, just above the eye, and you can command plus sign a couple times and then drag your thing to the center so you can get a better look. Click and drag to about the middle part of the eye. Let's do it over here again. Click and drag to about the same amount down. If it's not exact, no big deal. All right. So now the bend is a little bit weird, but that's fine. I'm going to leave it like that. I don't mind it. So I'm going to Command Plus, and we're going to go to a new tool now to add a little bit more character to these eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this toolbar, and I'm going to come about three quarters of the way down, just below the eyedropper tool to what's called a width tool. So with that selected, with our width tool selected, let's go ahead and click and drag down slightly. You might have to angle it depending on how the angle of your anchor point. Then you can see how it's expanding the width of our eyebrows. And when you get to a width you're comfortable with, let go. 
that looks good. So what that did is that it enabled me to get and expand the width of the stroke at certain at particular anchor points that I clicked at and it tapers down to the ending anchor point. So it's the original width here and the new expanded width there. I could come in here and add more or decrease more and make a more interesting shape, but I like the way it kind of gradually tapers here. So let's just hit Command, toggle to our Shift key, and select the other eyebrow. Release, we're still in the Width tool now. And I'm going to click and drag, and you got to kind of be careful. This tool can be a little bit finicky. Drag directly down because this anchor point was at a 90 degree angle to start, so it, I didn't have to angle my drag. If I wanted to change my points, I could cool thing about the width tool is that the original anchor point still maintain its flexibility and I can move this anchor point there without changing things too much or not altering the nice taper that I got. Okay, so that looks good. Just a couple little tweaks there. Now, let's add some shade. Let's throw some shade on this guy. So let's go to our pencil tool, click and hold it down. When you get here, you'll get um, the fly out window and you'll see the second item down is the blob brush tool. Go ahead and select that. So different than a pencil tool which draw would draw a million little points to make a line and if I just experiment with it, this is going to make a simple shape out of whatever I paint. So if I go ahead and select this, it only makes the pass around and it clipped out where I didn't pass. So the white spot where I didn't, it didn't cl clip it. If I did this with a pencil tool, there would be a bunch of points spiraling around and there'd probably be more white space. But with the blob tool, it's a nice tool to just make really quick washes of color that I can then go quickly and ch just change the fill of. So I like to use that for making shades and stuff like that. So let's go ahead reselect the blob tool and then also the cool thing about it is it works like a brush so I can hit the bracket keys to either enlarge or reduce the size of my brush stroke so for instance if I hit the left bracket key I'm gonna get a smaller stroke if I hit the right I can keep tapping until I get the width that I want so I'm gonna just start here at the head I'm gonna tap down to about this side and I'm just gonna just carefully try to drag a shape in there. Also works like the pencil tool. If I double click it, I can change the fidelity. I have it set not at 100% smoothness, but three quarters of the way. So you can see it straightened out for me a bit. Okay, so I don't want the shade of, of I don't want that color for my shade. I'm going to go over here and with the swatches window already open, I'm going to select the same color that we use for the face. I believe it's this one here. Right, that looks good. So it's matching identically the same shade as the face, but I want that a little bit darker. So if you have your color windows still open, my window's getting pretty full here. If not, you can go to Windows Color, bring that open. And with that open, you're going to get any of these sliders. It doesn't matter which one. Just hover over it, hit the Shift key. Really important, hit the Shift key. Then grab a slider and slightly drag to the left. And when I'm doing that, I'm gonna darken this shade just slightly. If I were to just pull one of these sliders, it's gonna completely change the color. I just wanna gradually alter the shade of this color. So that's a nice little handy tool to just change the, the tint or the shade of a color you're working with. So that looks good. So let's hold our space bar, let's drag down, let's put a shade, go back to our blob brush. Blob brush kind of hard to say. And let's hit a right bracket to kind of enlarge the brush a bit. And let's start at the top and curve in a bit. So we have a nice shade here. And then it's maintaining, I don't have to change the color anymore. It's already remembering it. That's awesome. And then let's make one just right here. And that's good. So we got some nice shades going. Now we can go ahead and let's give this a couple clicks over to the edge and then let's click this over a bit 
There we go. Let's make this one over to the corner. Hug it a little bit. Okay, that looks better. So one of the last few things, I wasn't crazy about the nose when I originally saw it drawn in the process video. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the nose. And you can modify the nose along with me, or you can leave it. And I, in the video, I tend to prefer a just upside down U. So I'm just going to draw that really quickly. That looks good. Okay. And then let's enlarge our mouth. I want the mouth to be a little bit bigger. So select the mouth. Then with the selection tool selected, hold the shift key and click and drag in any direction. And if you hold the option key, it's going to keep, it's going to enlarge from the center point too. So I'm not going to drag it to it, whichever direction I'm enlarging it to. And when you get to a size about here or wherever you want, just release. And then tap it down with the arrow key. That looks good. That looks like a very much more distressed face. And now, the last thing I want to add, and this could be a little tricky, is I want to add a little shadow where like the tongue or the inside of the mouth would be. So I'm going to come back to my blob brush, which is in the pencil tool, right? Second down. And also shift B is a shortcut to that. Then with the mouth selected, I'm going to come below the stroke and the fill options below these color toggles and then come to this icon here and it should be on draw normal I'm gonna select draw inside now what that's gonna enable me to do is just whatever I draw is gonna be masked in whatever shape I have selected so I'm gonna enlarge my brush slightly with my right bracket and I'm just gonna go and blob brush a little circle inside the mouth Okay, we can't see it, it went away, but if I get my direct selection tool, and if I click generally where I drew, I'll see I have this vector path now where the mouth is. It just picked up the color of the mouth. So what we all we have to do to separate it is use that same trick with the shades and the color. I'm gonna come over to my panel and hold shift. I'm gonna get any of my sliders and slightly drag it to the left to darken it. And you can see it on the screen. It should be working. And there we go. That might be a little bit too dark. If it's too dark, just go back. Select that color. Hold the shift key and drag to the right. Now we're going to lighten it. Okay. That looks better. And the last thing I want to do, let's remove the stroke from the mouth. Let's go back to change our drawing modes from draw inside to draw normal. There we go. Now we can select the mouth and select it again. And let's get rid of the stroke. There we go. Zoom out. Let's delete this stuff here. And it looks like we are almost done. I was going to almost declare it done, but there's one more thing. So I want to add some whites to my eyes. So to do that, Instead of drawing it, I'm just going to go over here. So for these little details, I'm just going to use the ellipse tool. If you're at the rectangle tool, hold it down, drag the second item down, you'll find the ellipse tool. Okay, come inside the eye, and then click and drag to the bottom right. And if you hold the shift key, it's going to constrain your your ellipse to be perfectly symmetrical or you can let it be a little bit oval if you want a perfect circle hold the shift key let's go back over here to swatches let's select the foreground and let's take the lightest of our yellows any one of them will work toggle between the two let's cancel that okay so when you have your color selected and your pupils the white of your eyes in there you can maybe reduce that if you want. That looks good. Okay. Select it. Hold the shift and the option key. Click and drag that pupil over to the eye in probably about the same general area. Release. And that enables us to make a copy and keep it in line with the other eye. And hit zero to zoom out. Hit tab to just hide your panels. And there we go. 
we have successfully created our character in the same, not identically, but the same general idea of what we created in the previous video. So when I create these characters, again, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about details. I kind of just let them happen from the sketches to digitizing. And I, when I get it all set, I kind of add and remove things as I like. And I don't worry about it being perfect. And when you do that, sometimes you get some pretty unique results. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to put up some more very soon.